of how an head of mathematics looks like. So say the combining the first row, so 0, 0, it's a Walsh code. And the second row, 0, 1, it's a Walsh code. And they're two distinct and orthogonal to each other. And coming over to the channels which we are going to investigate. The first one is the additive white Gaussian noise, which is also one of the most utilized channel models. Uh, in AWGN, there's a single noise component. It is a white noise which has a spectral density that is relatively constant and the amplitude follows a Gaussian distribution. It is also true that the channel does not take into account some major channel impairment parameters like fading, interference or dispersion. However, it generates simple mathematical models that can be used to study the behavior of a system without involving other phenomena. But problems with the terrestrial rings don't allow AWGN to be used for uh, multipath problems. However, AWGN is, has a common use in the simulation of background noise of the channel under study. And uh, this is uh, the capacity for an AWGN channel. It is also referred to as the Shannon Hartley theorem. And secondly, we have the Rayleigh fading channel. Uh, the basic Rayleigh fading channel is based on the assumption that after a signal passes through a transmission media, the magnitude of the signal will deteriorate, will attenuate randomly, and it follows a Rayleigh, Rayleigh distribution. Uh, Rayleigh distribution is defined as the radial component of two uncorrelated Gaussian random variables. This model is also very effective when there is no line of sight component present between the receiver and the transmitter, which is highly, which is usually the case in uh, very dense urban areas and uh, very densely populated cities. And uh, here is a fading, uh, here is an equation which uh, shows the uh, fading of the amplitude in the Rayleigh fading channel. Well, coming over to the program, right. So uh, this is the general program I have used to simulate uh, a Gaussian distributed channel and this will have AWGN and Rayleigh channels acting as the impairments to transmission. So we'll start off with only a couple of uses which is the most basic form. So uh, here we are using a Hadamard function which in turn produces Hadamard codes. So here we're using four as the number, so we can use four codes. So we derive two codes, one and two, and then we're generating the data which is used for the user one in thousand bits randomly. Then we use GPSV modulation. And the spreading of the codes is done by multiplying the uh, user data stream with the code we have generated. And we take the FFT. And the reason we do this is because MCCDMA uses the inverse Fourier transform to divide the bandwidth into orthogonal overlapping subcarriers and each of the subcarriers are modulated by a single chip. Next we add the cyclic prefix. The cyclic prefix is usually added to combat intersymbol interference. Then the transmitted data for user 1 is completely generated and the same approach is followed again for user 2. As we move on, so we get the entire data which is transmitted user 1 and user 2. Then we create a Rayleigh channel. This is simulated using four taps. Uh, these taps are nothing but say four channels which have different powers and different gains. So they'll act on the data randomly and differently. So we'll simulate the Rayleigh channel here and we pass the transmitted signal through it and we gain and this is the output we get after the signal has passed through the channel. Then we add the white Gaussian noise again depending on the random parameters which have been set for multiple SNR values. We add the addition, we add the additive noise along to the noise generated by the Rayleigh channel. So Y here is the data received after complete transmission at the receiver end. So the first step the receiver does is to remove the uh, the cyclic prefix which has been added before transmission then an FFT is performed to counter the IFT which was done and the BER of the data is recovered the bit error rate which is done by 
comparing the data with the data which has been originally transmitted with the data which was received and the simulated bit error rate for both the users are derived and it is displayed so when i run this program Ask customer values. I will typically give it as around 50. So this is the output we get, where both the user one and user two have uh, bit rates which are going down as the read to by and not values increase. This can be performed for four users and for six users, and they perform and they yield similar result. Uh, coming over to the results which have been already collected right uh, this is the simulation result for an AWGN with a couple of users as already shown the data is decreasing and so are uh, the EB band not is increasing as the bit rate is decreasing and also it is as we go to the number of uh, as we use it for four users the uh, simulation becomes clearer and we go over to higher number of users, say Q8 and 16, it is unmistakably clear. Uh, one result we can derive from the uh, impedance caused by AWGN channel is uh, the not much uh, offered uh, distraction in the BER. The, B the bit error rate is gradually constant at 0 0.08. So there's not much uh, bit error rate offered due to the addition of AWGN channel. But the interesting fact which is to be observed is that the number of users is directly proportional to the SNR required. As the number of users is increased, the, uh, the SNR value which is required to ensure uh, free transmission, error-free transmission also increases. And uh, as we go over, now we have uh, added the Rayleigh channel to an already present edge to white caution noise system. Now as we have simulated this, we see both the results are almost the same because a couple of users doesn't make much of a difference. But it is pretty evident that the bit error rate and the SNR are holding constant. Now when you were to hit the four user system, it is pretty obvious that the bit error rate and EBI not have changed in a different fashion, which is uh, uh, there is a gradual increase as as the number of users is increasing the bit error rate is increasing too as we have seen here the number of uh, the bit error rate by user 2 and user 4 this red line signifies 2 and this one signifies 4 as the number of users have increased the uh, bit error rate is also increased this can be confirmed from the simulation program we have done earlier and it confirms that the BER for user 1 was at 0.18 and for user 4 it is at 0.5 and it goes on increasing to factors of uh, 0.8 and 0.9 as we employ more and more users like say 16 or 32 so it's a gradual increase in BER as the users increase uh, these two other results we have derived from the simulation of NCCDMA for Rayleigh and AWGN system thank you